If you like what you watch, then don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates on The More Show. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new weekly television and radio shows. My next guest is solo artist Jace Lewis. Before embarking on a solo career, Jace was a respected guitarist and drummer. He is now an established artist in the Asian rock music scene. Jace has also signed a deal with EMI Records after self-producing his music video, Icon. Jace Lewis, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So Jace, how did this all start for you, your music career? Uh, well, it started at the age of six. Um, just wanted to do uh, music from there, wanted to be a guitarist and uh, been in a, an array of bands and yeah, wrote this track called Icon and uh, that's when it really, really started, you know, in the Asian market. Um, so, so how, I mean, what happened when you wrote that track? I mean, basically, uh, you were in a band before and what was the band called? Losing Sun. Losing Sun. And, and you just felt that it was the right time for you to make a move and l do something on your, by yourself. Uh, the band split up uh, unamicably, and um, and it sort of inspired me to go solo anyway. I was sort of leading up to the point where I was pretty much playing all the instruments. Um, you know, when we were recording the album, you know, I was doing a lot of keyboard work. Um, I did some guitars and the odd bass line here and there. But the only thing I didn't do was was guitaring, and obviously being the drummer in the band, so I know I could control all. You know, I knew I could do all of that. Yeah. So I just thought, yeah, you know, I'll record this track and uh, see if I could sing. And it gave birth to Icon, you know? Yeah, because, I mean, obviously, you know, from going from a drummer, which is pretty much in the back, isn't it? Yeah. To going on, you know, uh, the, you know the, the actual front man yourself. I mean, that must have been a funny, tra you know, a bit of a weird transition. Yeah, the, the transition from being right at the back of the stage to being a front man uh, was probably the f most scariest thing I've ever done. And it only really dawned on me when I was in Mumbai for the first, doing my first show. Um, and, you know, a couple of thousand people. And I just thought, Christ, I've got to be a front man now, you know? And it was literally within minutes of me before I was going on stage that it really hit me, you know? Right. So, so obviously, you mentioned there as well about, um, you know, you, you're, you're very big in, in the Asia markets. Mm. How did that happen? Uh, I was kind of in talks with EMI for about a year. Um, before I decided to go solo and um, as soon as I wrote this track Icon I gave it to them and they knew what to do with it immediately you know and they gave it to VH1 and MTV which was MTV VH1 abroad or yeah, yeah. VH1 yeah. and MTV Asia yeah uh, and they know what to do with it immediately and they made me artist of the month and then it was just from you know the rest was history then you know and I, I was playing catch-up I mean, what was that like, you know, to, to I mean, was it 40,000 plus on some of these, uh, some of these tours you've been on? Yeah, DNA Festival, that was 45,000, yeah. Uh, in, in India, I mean, what's the response of the fans over there? I mean, do, I mean are you sort of, you know, uh, uh, do they chase you? <laughs> yeah, you get the occasional fanatical, you know, uh, person here and there, but a lot of them are, are really generous and um, really friendly. And, you know, I, I think it's great, you know, that they, um, relate to what I'm writing about. Um, I haven't particularly, you know, the, the, I like, uh, there's a difference between recognition and fame. You know, recognition for my music, I'm happy with. The fame thing is something I don't really uh, get used to, you know, and I oh, think you're either. What are you after, though? Recognition or fame? I mean, recognition, you know, uh, I've been recognized for being an artist now, and I'm happy with that. Um, and I try and keep myself to myself. I pretty much keep as a private type of guy. And it's funny when you get put in that into that position, you're either somebody that's going to embrace it or, or go a bit introvert. And I definitely went introvert, you know, for for a while. It made me freak out reading about myself in the paper. And uh, but I've gotten used to it now. You know, I have I've gotten used to the fact that this is what I am and this is what I'm doing, and I've gotten easy with it. Yeah, I mean, is it? Would you say you had to make a choice whether you know this is what you really want to do? Because obviously, you know, it's very, it's, it's, it's different, isn't it, from saying you're going to do this to when it actually happens and you're on stage. Yeah, well, they do say you've got to be careful for you, what you wish for. Um, yeah, I, I'm easy with it now. You know, I, it, it's part of it's part of the fabric of, of what I do in my daily life, and I'm 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 cool with it. But yeah, that that initial, I mean, to have been introduced to the world like that. Especially, you know, like overseas, I didn't really know. I was leading a double, a double life. Um, 
you know, I was Jace back in Kenford Hill writing music on a guitar, and then in the East, this guy on MTV being played all the time. Um, Facebook following was going up. Yeah. People asking if I was the real Jace and stuff like that, and it was a bit strange. Um, and arriving there was equally as weird. Um, you know, you've got people at airports wanting to talk to you and, and all of that. But now, it's, uh, if I feel normal with it now, I'm, I'm sort of com comfortable with it, and yeah, you know, it's... And, and, and your latest track, is it Passes 2? Passes 2, yeah. yeah. And just tell us what, 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 a bit about that track as well. Um, the, the track itself, Passes 2, is a remix that I did off an original album track I did. Um, and yeah, I, did a, I chose to do a music video for it because uh, it had some interesting signature, time signatures and some real nice sweeps and synths and stuff like that. And I wanted to direct my own video. So, um, so yeah, I managed to, to sort of make a video for that and direct it and edit it myself. Uh, which... And what were you trying to capture from that video? I mean, what was... Well, I've, I've been frustrated a little bit with, with having videos made to my music. Um, it hasn't quite captured what I've envisaged seeing with the music. And one of the things I wanted to create was to be able to see the beat, you know, because it's very, you know, beat heavy, all my music, it's very driven. And there's a lot of atmosphere changes in there as well. So I wanted to be able to, to have that in a music video. Um, and that is why I, I did that. A lot of it is just to symbolize rhythm change and, and, and difference in mood, you know. Uh, well, how would you class your music? Uh, electronica meets rock. I mean, what's some of your inspirations as well? Um, Mike Oldfield, you know, Tubular Bells. I'm definitely into some of his intricacy in his music. Um, Depeche Mode for the sounds of synths, you know, Gary Newman. Um, and yeah, very heavy rock music, you know, like Fear Factory and Metallica and stuff like that, just because of the energy of it all. Absolutely. And I think you compare, you put all that in one sort of drum and just come out with this chemical, you know, which is what, it's the magic of, of putting it all together. Well, there's more magic in, in your background as well, because, I mean, you've got a, uh, your, your main backer uh, is David Prowse, isn't it? That's the right, Darth yeah. Vader actor. Now, oh, just tell us how that came about. I met Dave many years ago, in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> um, no, I met him at a, at a convention, never been to a convention before in my life. I was given this black and white photocopied flyer on the street in Cardiff and went to this convention and couldn't believe that there was the guy that was playing Darth Vader, you know, and obviously a lot of people, you say Darth Vader and the person that played it and you come up with James Earl Jones and there's always been this, this interest of the person who was Darth Vader, yeah. you know, and, uh, and yeah, I wanted to meet the guy. So I queued up and shook his hand and we got talking about music. And, uh, and from that point on, we just struck up this friendship. I've been constantly interested in his career, and he's been sort of interested in mine and mentoring it and really guiding me um, through some difficult times in the entertainment business, as well as giving me some great advice. And yeah, it was crazy from a chance meeting like yeah. that to going around the world, different countries with him and forming a good friendship. Yeah, I mean, you, like you say, you've been all, all the way around the world with David as well. Mm. And I mean, it must be amazing to have that sort of support there as well from David, because it, I mean, there's a guy that's, that's you know, worn the T-shirt basically. And, oh, uh, absolutely, yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, he's been, he's had, you know, all the highs and lows of the business. He's, yeah. given, he's passed them down to me, you know, and uh, mm. given me some great advice. Um, yeah. Would you say it's quite support, you know, emotional support advice as well sometimes? Because, I mean, there must be... It's, it's a funny old industry you're in, isn't it? Yeah, well, I've had a few relationship breakdowns as well, and Dave's uh, been one of the first people to know about them. And it's just been great, you know, he's, to have somebody of, of that experience and, uh, you know, of, of, um, of status as well in, in film. You know, I mean, he played, you know, one of the most famous villains in yeah, cinematic one of, one history. Of the so most iconic so one, that yeah. behind, you know, to, to be supporting me is... Uh, it's phenomenal, really, and I, I often don't, I don't stop and think about it enough, um, because I see him as Dave. Yeah, you know. but, but his son was a was a drummer. Am I am I right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. James. Yeah, so he's a drummer. Connection often, there straight away. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's yes. Yeah, it's, it, it's just the respect, you know, the mutual respect in yeah. in yeah. each other's trade. Um, you know, that's what that's what does it. So, what can they expect from you? What can what can people expect from you in the future? Do you think? Lots of live shows, you know, I've got the, I've got a hunger now to just go out there and tour as much as I can 
Um, you know, this is a very, very short lifespan in this, you know, uh, well, I say that. It's, this is, it's only been a two-year-old project, um, and a lot has happened in two years. And I've had to really digest a lot of stuff from all different types of angles and all different types of cultures. So now I'm sort of settled with it all now, you know, I'm just touring a lot. I've just done a, a fantastic tour with Gary Newman. Yeah, because um, you was his backer, weren't you, for the... Yeah, yeah, I was his main support. Well, he was on, yeah, on tour, yeah. September for the Dead Sun Rising. You uh, must have learned a lot from him. Yeah, Gary's been, Gary's great, you know, and his wife. I mean, again, that's another chance meeting that was, you know, and, and formed a really good friendship with Gary and his wife, Gemma. Um, and, uh, yeah, they were like, you know, come out and support us on this tour, and it's been phenomenal. And all his fans made me feel welcome. I mean, they're supposed to be a very difficult lot to try and get through, you know, um, but, uh, yeah, they took, they took to me pretty well. Yeah, because, um, I mean, uh, you know, the music industry and the industry you're in, it's, it's, t it's tough, isn't it? It's very cutthroat, yeah, yeah. it's a ruthless business. Uh, yeah. I mean, and from what I've seen of the acting business as well, you know, by being friends with Dave, is equally, if not, as, if not worse. Um, oh, you know, uh, it's, it's quite yeah. a ruthless industry, yeah. yeah. I mean, what advice would you have to, you know, bands that are trying to make it right now, you know, bands like yourself? that are out there desperate to make it watching this? Just ask what you're doing it for, really, you know? Um, you know, there's a lot of ego and all of that involved in this business, um, which um, is a difficult thing to deal with. Uh, and, but uh, I don't know, I was given a good bit of advice by somebody. My advice is to never give advice, and that's a paradox in itself. <laughs> but. You know, there's some truth in that as well, you know. You just go out and find it, find it for yourself because it's, it's so fast-moving, the business. I could say it's like this and don't go down that road and then, you know, it could be different the, the week after, you know. It's yeah. just a very strange thing to try and keep up with, you know. Uh, and what would you say has been one of the most, one of the highs in your business, in your career so far? Oh, that's a different, well, um, God, a high. Uh, being on stage and performing. I did a, a show and that was in supporting Gary Newman in Shepherd's Bush Empire. And although I've done these big shows overseas to the 40,000 odd, you know, that was quite incredible. Um, but in Shepherd's Bush Empire, it was sold out and I actually stood. I haven't done this in any of the shows. I stood on the edge of the stage and I just took a moment during a, one part of the song where I don't sing or do anything. And I just stood there and I just thought to myself, what am I looking at? Because there's these three tiers, you know, it's in an old theatre and they're just full. It was just full of people looking down on you and it was, you know, it was quite claustrophobic in a way. But I was just stood there absorbing, you know. And you'll never forget that, will you? I'll never forget that, no. And there was a guy who stood in front of me with a chrome German helmet and I don't know who he was, but that, was, that really <laughs> put me off. That was the freakiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> well, Jace Lewis, thank you so much for joining us today. For more information on any of my guests, visit my website, themoreshow.co.uk. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates on the show. So until next time, thanks for watching. Visit themoreshow.co.uk forward slash shop to purchase products and services from your favourite past guests. If you're new to this site, you can also catch up on the previous television and radio shows through YouTube and The More Show website.